The suspect, Chuku Ibuka Nuobodo, is charged with murder, but still on the run. We actually didn't even do call outs for all of our members because we didn't want the possible suspect to know where we were searching or what we were doing. Hey, what's going on, my good people? Now, as y'all all may have learned by now, there's been a suspected killer named in the case of Felicia Johnson, the young lady who was originally from California who went to Houston, Texas to celebrate her birthday. And when the, first, when the story first came out, you know, they had this story about her going to the strip club, applying for a job, you know, waiting on the Uber, the Uber taking too long, somebody else didn't pick her up, took her back to the hotel. It was a whole bunch of mess. A whole bunch of mess. But now, we have the police documents. And after reading those documents, I was able to put together a timeline of Felicia Johnson's final hours. Y'all know how we do over here. We want to see the details. So I went looking for the details. And that's what we about to cover in this video. So come on, ride with me. Felicia Johnson was staying in Houston, Texas for her birthday. And she was staying at this hotel right here called the Intercontinental at 6750 Main Street. Police learned that just after midnight on April the 16th, 1228 to be exact, Felicia Johnson made a post on a website called skipthegame.com. Now, they didn't say what was in the post, what she was talking about, nothing. They didn't say none of that. But at some point, she started to communicate with this man right here, him. Now, I can't pronounce his first name. I think his last name is pronounced Nawabado or Nawobado. We're going to call him CN, okay, for the sake of this video. But she started to communicate with him through Snapchat. And the conversation involved $500. They didn't say what the $500 was for. I mean, but, I mean, we're not stupid. You know, you can only imagine what that conversation was about. Hmm? CN made two ATM withdrawals that night. One for 300 and one for 200 Now, when we were going over the details, you know, I had another YouTuber ask me, like, well, well why would he make two withdrawals? And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't see nothing wrong with that. Because some ATMs, they have a maximum. You know, you, he may not have been able to get the whole 500 in the first while. So he had to split it up. He got three, then he got two. That's it. That's all. As far as I'm concerned. But he ended up getting this money totaling $500. And he also requested an Uber for Felicia and sent that Uber to her hotel. He requested that Uber at 2.47 a.m. After requesting that Uber, CN sent Felicia a screenshot of the car that would be there to pick her up. And it's a car similar to this Porsche right here. Nice luxury car. That car pulled up eight minutes later at 2.56. And police have Felicia on surveillance leaving that hotel. And she was not seen or heard from after that. So where did she go? I'm about to show y'all where she went. Watch the movement. Now, at 3.18, CN pulled up to these apartments right here on Wind Chase Boulevard. And not 10 minutes later, Felicia and her Uber was right behind him. Now, understand this. From the hotel to these apartments, it takes roughly 27 minutes. We're going to say 30 minutes. So that makes sense. The Uber picked her up at 2.56. She gets to these apartments. At, at 328 and she's dropped off there and let's not forget CN is already there waiting for her he's waiting on her so she gets there gets dropped off only to be taken somewhere else now okay wait, wait a minute think about this ladies if you was in her shoes what would you be thinking at that very moment because I know my antennas would be up on fire. Because if, I mean, why not just have an Uber 
take her straight to your 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 place. Why all the extra? Do y'all think Felicia had a problem with that? I do. I really do. Now, for whatever reason, Felicia continued on with her night with CN. And they ended up at an apartment complex called The Link Apartments. Now, CN drives a 2009 Nissan. This Nissan is registered to an apartment there at The Link Apartments. So he then took her to his house. And not only that, it's only six minutes away from where she was dropped off by the Uber. Yeah, six minutes. CN and Felicia arrived at the Link Apartments at about 3.51. And at 3.55, her cell phone was pinging from a cell tower near those apartments. So she was there. Oh, she was there. Okay. But then at 4.54, CN is seen leaving those apartments. And guess where he was going? To dump her phone and her purse in Bear Creek Park. Hmm? Okay, so we'll, we'll wait a minute. If they didn't get there to damn near 4 o'clock, and at 4.54 he's seen leaving, and he's going to dump her cell phone and her purse, her personal belongings, what the hell happened in an hour? I mean, I just, I don't understand that part. What happened in that hour? Because understand this, we know that he went to the ATM and withdrew the money, the, the $500. We know that there was conversation about the $500. So my thing is this, if he was anticipating on killing her, why take out the money? Hmm? Can somebody answer that? Why withdraw the money? Did Felicia get to this apartment and then what, change her mind? You know, is she tr is she trying to leave? You know, maybe, you know, he thought he was going to get sex for the 500 and she, she wasn't on it. I don't know. But what I do know is that at 454, he's leaving to go dump her stuff. And I know that because in the police report, it said that her cell phone pinged from the area that it was found in at 512. Now, from those apartments to where they found her cell phone and her purse takes roughly about 15 minutes. So that makes sense to me. The time adds up. So I'm wondering, like, where was Felicia during this time? I suspect she was still at the apartment. And at 5.38, CN returned home. Hmm? Now, at this time, CN, he in full cleanup mode. I mean, he didn't already dump her phone in her purse. He didn't went back home, got home at 538. And then not, not even two and a half hours later, he's seen at Home Depot at 814. He went to Home Depot and he, this, this particular Home Depot was about 20 minutes away from his house. He went there and he bought these gloves right here. Wonder, wonder what he needed those for. Hmm? Because after he left Home Depot, he went to a medical center. Now, in the report, it didn't say which medical center, but he went to seek treatment for his hand. He told them that he cut his hand. They fixed him up, got him up out of there. And that was at 10, 12 on April the 16th. While CN was getting medical treatment at about 10.30 a.m., Felicia Johnson's family in California they were reaching out to her friend in Houston, a girl by the name of Ariana. They're reaching out to her. They want her to go find Felicia's phone. They had already checked that, that Find My iPhone app. So they were able to tell Felicia's friend exactly where to go to find this phone. And that's exactly what she did. She found the phone. But here's the problem. A couple things. First and foremost, why were they so alarmed at 10.30 a.m. that morning? So much so that they didn't check the map, the find my iPhone, everything. They were so alarmed. So it made me think, like, you know, had, had she reached out to somebody earlier that night? You know, maybe did she feel like she was in trouble? I mean, I don't know. And then not only that, when, when the friend found the phone, 
it was covered in blood. And I'm like, this is not good. When we got that information, when that news, I mean, a lot of us was like, oh man, this is not going to end well. We knew it. We knew it. Sometime after receiving treatment for his hand, CN made his way to Walmart. I told y'all, he on the move right now. He in cleanup mode. He, he made his way to Walmart and he bought a flashlight and a t-shirt. Okay? Now, in the report, it don't say what happened after that. But what I do know is that later on that night, on April the 16th, just after 12 a.m., which would make it April 17th, okay, he went back to Walmart and purchased a reciprocating saw. Hmm? CN also purchased some garbage bags and four hand towels. Now, understand this. It's clear to me what's going on here. And what's understood don't need to be explained, baby. It's clear exactly what it is he's doing at this moment. Hmm? On April the 17th, at about 10.16 a.m., CN went back to Home Depot. But this time, he went to purchase uh, an 18-inch pruning saw. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. You know, just watching his movement, we know what he's up to. And it just makes me sick to my stomach that he's going through all of this to cover his ass. I don't know. But one of my lingering questions is whether or not the plan was to kill her. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know. But, what I mean, what do y'all think about that? Was the plan to kill her? Or was he just going to try to rape her? Because... Understand this, when the police did a background check on him, they found a prior incident where a girl was accusing him of trying to rape her. But when he told his side of the story, he told them that he went to the ATM, got $150, this girl tried to take off with his money. So I was like, oh, he been paying for sex. He been tricking. This what he does, okay? Days after the murder, CN started to do Google searches on things like how to destroy DNA. And that makes sense to me. Because like if you look at the layout of his apartment, when you first walk in, this is what you see. In the police reports, it said that there was blood outside the bathroom door. Okay? In, in, in the hallway. But most importantly, they said that most of the blood was found in this bedroom. So... The most brutal part of her attack happened there. Her, they said her blood was everywhere. And in some spots in this, this bedroom, her blood was mixed with his. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, remember, he, he had to go get medical, tre uh, medical treatment because he said he cut his hand. So while he was trying to kill her, he injured himself. Mm -hmm. CN was also looking for the most forested part in Houston. So now he's thinking, get rid of her. He's looking for somewhere to hide her. Now, don't forget, her phone and her purse was found in Bear Creek Park. And uh, somewhere in May, during the investigation, they executed a search warrant on CN's car. They found a couple things, a nine millimeter handgun, they found a Walmart receipt, a Home Depot receipt, some gloves, but they also found a knife and a shovel. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. When I saw shovel, I said, oh, so did he bury her somewhere? I mean, maybe Bear Creek Park. It seems he may be familiar with that area. And that's probably why he needed the flashlight. Hmm? See, and then... Google's how to delete history. So he's trying to erase all communication, all Google searches, anything related to this crime, he is trying to delete permanently. And then not only that, he then turns around and searches for how to be a serial killer. Really? I mean, so is he so intrigued by what he has done? That, I mean, because it, it almost feels like he's trying to turn this into his thing now. Now, understand this. 
During this investigation, the police um, confiscated CN's phone. And what they found was three other photos of deceased people. Really? Really? So, as far as I'm concerned, this is not his first rodeo. And he's trying to make sure that is not his last. Because he is then found searching for this. Yeah. Houston Escorts. Really? He's still looking for women. He's looking for more victims. Ladies. Y'all don't hear me right now. He's looking for more victims. Hmm? Now, if you've seen that video that I did called The Ride Along, where I highlighted this case, then you'll already know how I feel about these types of situations. Ladies, we got to be careful how we moving out here. Especially when we fooling around on those online dating sites and chat rooms. and We got to be careful because it's men like him lurking in those chat rooms, on those dating sites. We don't know who's behind the scenes. And then you meet this guy online or, you know, and, and it's sounding real good. He's talking real good to you. So much so that his promise to pay $500 got her about that hotel. Hmm? Now look at where we at with this. And we still looking for Felicia. We have yet to find her. And not only that, CN, the police had CN at one point. They had him in custody and let him go. So guess what? He's still out here amongst us. Y'all better be careful. Come on, let's talk about it. Meet me in the comments. I'll be back.